Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to be kind of walking you through um, the projects that we're going to do in trying to figure out where an earthquake happens. Now, the great thing about an earthquake is that you can figure out exactly where it happens if you have something called a seismograph from three different locations. So we're going to look at a earthquake today. Um, so we're going to open up this week's folder and we're going to go to Tuesday because today's Tuesday and locating an earthquake in San Francisco. So let's click on that. And when you open that up, you're going to see three different things. You're going to see our assignment Dropbox, uh, the link to the website Virtual Earthquake. This is the same website that we were using yesterday. We're just going to go through this website today. We're not just going to be looking at that first page anymore. We're going to go interact through this website and um, gather all the information we need. And the last thing is the answer sheet. And this is where we're going to be uh, writing down all of our answers from today. So just click on that, download it. If you want, you can print it out and take a screenshot of it, or you can download it and just type in your answers into the Word document. Okay, so make sure you have this answer sheet downloaded. This is what you will be submitting at the end of the day. You're going to be submitting three things. You're going to be submitting this sheet here. You're going to be submitting, let's open up today's assignment. You're going to be submitting three things. You're going to be submitting that answer sheet. And if you look down on the bottom here, you're going to be submitting two more things. So the answer sheet is one thing. You're also going to be submitting a screenshot of your map. And you're also going to be um, uploading a certificate of completion. Okay. Um, and you'll, you'll know what those things are as we come across them. Okay. If you're uncertain about how I'm grading what we're looking at today. So this is our criteria. This is our rubric for grading. We got our answer sheet. That's worth six points out of the 10. There's six things you're writing down on the answer sheet. Each thing is a point. Uh, your screenshot is worth a point and a half and your certificate is another point and a half. And then just having it on time is worth a point for a total of 10 points. So these here, these are your directions. These are everything we're gonna have to do as we go through this. Okay, download the answer sheet. Make sure you've done that. Follow the virtual earthquake link provided at the bottom of this page. So that's the link that I have there in the folder. It's also down here on the bottom. So let's click on that. And that's gonna open up the same website that we were looking at yesterday. Okay, let's go back to our project. Step number three, choose the San Francisco area to generate a, ses a set of seismograms for the earthquake. So we're gonna go back to our website, we're gonna click on San Francisco, and we're going to click Submit Choice. And this is gonna open up uh, a new piece of information. This is gonna tell you some information about um, so this is kind of our local map. It's going to tell you this is a seismograph and how to measure the S&P interval. Okay. And if we look here on this, the S&P interval is just the amount of time. So you can see down here on the x-axis, we have time. The amount of time between the P wave, which is where our seismograph starts getting really, 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 really bumpy. And then the arrival of our S wave is when it starts getting bumpy again. So this this space here from when it starts getting bumpy to when it winds down to starts getting bumpy again, that's going to be our S and P interval. And all you do is you read that time down here on this X axis. That's all we're looking at. So we're going to do that for three seismographs as we go through this. So let's click view seismographs. And this is going to give us three different seismographs. If you want, it might be a good idea to zoom in on this page because these seismographs are a little small. Okay. And this is our first seismograph. Our first seismograph is for Eureka, California. And if we look on our answer sheet here, we have the same seismograph for Eureka, California. Okay, so let's look at this. So this is the beginning of our P waves. P stands for primary and primary is first. So these are the first waves that are coming. And you're gonna notice that our P waves are always gonna start at zero seconds. This is the beginning of our earthquake. Okay, and we follow this, we follow this, it kind of winds down a little bit, kind of winds down a little bit, and then boom, it goes again. So these are our S waves. S waves stand for secondary waves. They are the second waves to come. 
So our, dis our difference between our S and our P wave arrival, our P waves arrived at zero seconds. Our S waves arrived at, we're gonna follow this down to our X axis, 50 seconds. So in this box here, we're gonna type in 50, because that's the amount of time it took from the S to the P waves. And on our answer sheet, we're gonna type in 50. Make sure you're writing down these answers in both places. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is Elko Nevada. Go down to Elko Nevada. So here are P waves, our primary waves are starting again at zero seconds. And we go down and our S waves start right here. Okay, so if we go down, all right, not quite 70, pretty far away from 80. And if you look at these, there's five spaces in between the 70 and the 80, which means that these spaces are going up by two. So if we go down, we're at 70, and then one more space after that is going to be 72 seconds. So type it in there and type it in on our answer sheet. And we're going to do the same thing for Las Vegas. So again, here's Las Vegas. Our P waves start at zero. Our S waves start at here 60. One box, two box, go all the way down. That is going to be 64 seconds. And again, write that down on your answer sheet as well as on the website. Make sure you're writing these down in both places. Okay, now what we're going to do, this is the bottom of the page. Click Convert S&P Interval. Okay. Uh, now we have some background information on how to figure out the S&P interval. Uh, this is all page 11 of your reference table, which luckily for you, we're not really going to be worrying much about. Okay. The way we figure out our distance, so for each of these locations, we can figure out the distance. And that's just based on that time that you typed in. So what we're gonna see here, these are all of the times that you typed in. So if you typed in a different time, you're gonna get different numbers here. But to figure out our distance in kilometers, we're gonna be using this line graph here. So Eureka, California had an SP interval of 50 seconds. So we're gonna go up to 50 on the y-axis. We're gonna go over to the line that's graphed on this graph. And we're gonna go down to our x-axis, okay? Um, so here's 400, here's 500. We're right here, okay? Again, we look, there's five spaces in between 400 and 500. That means each space is gonna be 20 kilometers, but we're not exactly at 480 here. We're also not exactly at 500. It looks like we're kind of somewhere in the middle. So what's in between 480 and 500? Sounds like 490 to me. So I'm going to type in 490 there. And also remember on your answer sheet, type in 490. And also fill out these. These are just the same numbers that you did for the last one. So I'm putting 490 for my distance there. Elko, Nevada is 72. I'm going to go up here, 60 and 70. There's 10 spaces. That means each space is one. So here's 70, 71, 72. Follow that line across. We end up right about here. Drop down to the bottom. 70 seconds is about 700 kilometers. And lastly, Las Vegas, Nevada, 64. So we have 60, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Go across. So here's 600, this is 620. Remember each of these are 20. This is a little bit past that. It's not quite 630, 630 would be right in the middle. So let's say 625. Again, make sure you wrote down those values there. So we have 700 for Elko and 625 for Las Vegas. And now you're just gonna click on find epicenter. Cool. So it says I was very close. Um, where your epicenter is, is you notice we have three circles here. We have the yellow circle, the green circle, and the blue circle. Our epicenter is where those three circles intersect, which is right here. And ideally you would want the three circles to be exactly intersecting. And we don't really see that here. There's a little bit of a space there, but we can pretty much say our epicenter 
is right where my cursor is right now. Okay. So how well did I do? The three circles do not intersect at a point, but they're close. So it's likely we made a slight error in the S and P interval, so our time, or in our distance. Um, so we can click Remeasure if we want, or we can just click View the True One. So this is the one that we found, and this is the true one. Uh, it looks like this blue line here, my Eureka, is a little bit too long. Okay, so this is the true one. This is my data. This is the actual data. This is one of the things you're going to have to upload. So make sure you take a screenshot of this. So here's my screenshot on your iPad. Just take a screenshot like you normally would. Um, so boom, take a screenshot. Now this is going to move through computing the Richter magnitude. Uh, and you're going to be looking at how high those go. There's nothing to write on your answer sheet. We're done with our answer sheet. So we're just looking at how high our S waves are going now. And that's going to figure out how powerful this earthquake was. So we're going to go to next page. This is talking about how we use this thing called a nonogram. It does it for you. You don't really need to worry about this today. So here we have our S waves. So this is at zero, kind of the middle of our graph. And our S waves go all the way up. I'm going to zoom in again so we can see here. So this is 250, 260, 270, 280, let's say 285 for our amplitude. Okay. For Elko Nevada, much smaller. This means that we're further away from the earthquake. So here's zero, here's 50, let's say 60. It looks like it's right there around 60. And here's Las Vegas, a little bit stronger. So here's zero, here's 50. It looks like it's right there at 100. So just type that in, submit to nonogram. And what we end up getting are these three lines here going across in a crisscrossy and they intersect right here. And this is gonna be our magnitude. This is how strong the earthquake is. So here's seven right here. Here's eight right here. This is 7.5. This looks like this is just one tick above seven. So that's gonna be 7.1. So I'm gonna type that in there. I'm gonna confirm my magnitude. Congratulations, I did an awesome job. The last thing you're gonna do is create your certificate. So all you're gonna do here, just type in your name. Okay. Type in your institution. So that's the school you go to. That's gonna be Highland Middle School. Okay, and your city and your state is obviously going to be. Okay, email certificate to your instructor? No, no, I don't, I don't want you to do that. Uh, just, just type in get certificate and it's gonna say, Congratulations, you did this. Uh, here is my certificate. Here is the table. We're gonna take a screenshot of both of these. I want both of these, okay? Not just the certificate. So take that screenshot, boom. And now what you're gonna do is on the submission, you're going to submit all three of those objects. You're gonna submit the answer sheet that you're filling everything out on. You're going to submit the map screenshot that we took, and you're going to submit the certificate of completion with the data. Okay, we're going to be doing this a couple more times this week, so please refer back to this video if you're having trouble on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, uh, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, and good luck.